Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, I would like to continue to talking about certain very simple kinds of motion where we can derive the equations of motion relatively easily. Now, the previous lecture was um, about the simplest possible motion. It's the uniform motion when we are moving along the straight line trajectory with the same uh, speed along it the same velocity vector, so to speak. Now, today, we will consider the motion with constant acceleration. Constant acceleration. Now, um, this lecture is part of the course of Physics 14th, uh, presented on unizor.com website. Uh, I suggest you to use this website as uh, the source where you are watching this lecture, because the website contains uh, lots of explanatory notes, very detailed, and uh, there are um, exams for those who want to, to take it for every section, or will be. Not everything is ready yet. Um, and the site is, by the way, free, no advertisement, so use the website. Okay, so let's go to constant acceleration. So what is constant acceleration? Well, obviously, that's acceleration is constant. Now, what is acceleration? You know this is the second derivative of uh, coordinate functions of time. Now, it's constant, it means that these are this way, right? Or, if you wish, and I actually insist on using it in wherever I can, in a vector form, when your position vector is three-dimensional vector with three coordinates to the point where actually object is located. So this would be my second derivative of this vector is equal to, and ABC is another vector, which I call a vector of acceleration. So this is the vector uh, in, in interpretation of the same, instead of three equations, I will have only one. Uh, the second derivative of the vector of position is equal to constant vector of acceleration. So acceleration is given, and our purpose is to derive equations of motion. And I will do it exactly the same way uh, as, I did, as I did um, in the previous lecture for uh, uniform motion. If I know my second derivatives, I can uh, guess what my first derivatives are, right? So, if my second derivative is a constant, my first derivative is a linear function. So, my first derivative is a linear function of of t. Now, why did I use this? Well, that's very easy. It's some, some constant, unknown to me constant, and I have to add it because adding the constant to a function doesn't change the derivative. So this basically describes all the possible functions, derivative of which is equal to constant a, right? Now, if I will put the t is equal to zero in this uh, particular uh, formula, I will have that this particular constant, this constant which I symbolized as vx zero, is nothing but this. Now, what is the first derivative of my coordinate function? Uh, that's the velocity, right? So, if it's x, it's x component. If it's y, it's y component. If it's z, it's z component. So, these are components of velocity. That's why I put v uh, with an index x, which means it's an x component of velocity at moment t is equal to zero. So, that's why the symbolics this way. And similarly, This would be y components at point zero, uh, and z is equal to plus z component of velocity at time zero. So, as we see, we already have the velocity. So, velocity at any moment t is equal to these particular uh, formulas, where a, b, and c are given uh, components of my acceleration vector, 
and v, vx of 0, yv of 0, and vz of 0 are components of my uh, velocity at time is equal to 0, which means it's an initial velocity of the object. So there is something which is initial velocity. And in, for, for, for any case, whenever the v initial velocity is, uh, the formulas actually would be correct and they have to really take the initial velocity into consideration. Because if there is a bigger velocity and then I accelerate, it will be definitely even uh, further my, my, my object will move during the same time, right? So it definitely depends on initial velocity and acceleration. But not only that. Now this is only my first derivative from coordinate functions, right? Now, let's express this again in a vector format. This is my velocity at point t. That's what x uh, prime, y prime, and z prime are. And it's equal to t times vector of a, b, c, which is t times a, plus, and these components are velocity of point zero. So this is the same, this is the same as these three equations, right? Velocity at point zero, this is initial velocity. These are components. A means components A, B, and C. And these three are components of velocity at moment T. Okay, fine. Now I have to go one more step and guess what are my um, uh, coordinate functions if I know the derivative of these functions are these. Well, for those who understand the calculus, it's basically an integration. All right, so what's the integration of this thing? It's again very simple. x of t is equal to, to get a t, I have to have a t square over 2, right? Derivative from t squared would be 2t, two, 2 and t would cancel out, and I will have a t. Now, to get this constant, I have to have this, times t. Derivative of this is dx of 0. And again, I have to add another constant, which I can call x0, which obviously is the initial x-coordinate, because if time is equal to t, this is 0, if time is equal to 0, this is 0, and this is 0, so x of 0. So x0 is definitely x of component, uh, component uh, x at time 0. All right. Now, obviously the same thing comes with y. That would be bt square over 2 plus vy of 0 plus y0 and z of t is equal to ct square over 2 plus vz of 0 plus uh, t t plus z0 let's be more accurate okay now, let's talk about vector format of this. Now, these three components are components of my position vector, right? At time t. Now, these three components are my acceleration. So, I have t equals, not, e, not plus, equals uh, t squared over 2 time, times acceleration vector a plus t times my initial vector at moment 0 plus my initial position at moment t0. This is x0, y0, and z0. So this is the same as these three equations, but in the vector format. Now, you know that trajectories uh, of uniform motion is always straight line which is goes exactly into the direction of the velocity. Now, when velocity is constant for uniform motion. Now, in case of acceleration constant, 
velocity is no longer constant because velocity is increasing since we have the same acceleration we have velocity equally increasing on uh, on uh, as the time goes by so what is the trajectory will it be a straight line it depends let's imagine a physical experiment you are on the top of the tall tower and you drop the ball but you're not dropping it just down you're throwing this way so what happens with the ball on one hand the ball has the horizontal component because you throw the ball this direction on another uh, from another standpoint the ball should go down because the gravity so the ball actually goes this way now you will learn a little later that the gravity actually is causing the acceleration the ball will, would, would uh, um, uh, go faster and faster down now horizontally if there is uh, if, if, if we will forget about the resistance of the of the air uh, the horizontal the speed would be the same right so the speed would be this way and uh, acceleration this way and the trajectory would be obviously not a straight line right however if your speed your initial speed is vertical uh, down and the gravity goes down then the trajectory will be down so what I'm saying is that if my speed initial speed and the constant acceleration in this initial speed and constant acceleration are proportional to each other then what happens so let's say my v of zero my initial um, uh, velocity is equal to some constant a times a time, times vector of acceleration so they are collinear velocity and ex initial velocity and constant acceleration are collinear that's what collinearity actually means now what happens with this you will have p of t is equal to some kind of a function of time times uh, a right so I replace v of 0 with k a now a as a vector goes outside of parentheses and in the parentheses I have t square over 2 and t k plus p 0 p of 0 now this is the constant vector and this is the constant vector right so as a result no matter what time parameter is my p of t would be collinear to this now this is basically everything I wanted to talk about constant acceleration as a movement again uh, acceleration is caused by forces which we have not yet touched that's the dynamics part now we're talking about kinematics which is only like analysis of the movement itself considering you know the velocities accelerations initial position etc now the only thing which I can probably add is that if you are considering some case when there is no initial velocity then um, again you um, will have a simpler case and the formula would be simpler and if you choose your um, uh, system of coordinate with such a way that your initial position is at origin now this also disappears and the only thing you have is this one so basically if your acceleration if you choose the system of um, coordinates in such a way that your acceleration 
is going along the x-axis, so this is acceleration along to this, and your position initial is here, and there is no initial velocity, then obviously you will move here, and your x-coordinate would be t squared over 2 times a, where a is the acceleration along this. y and uh, z would be equal to 0 in this particular case. And this is the simplest kind of a way of um, analyzing your um, mo mo motion with constant acceleration. But you have to really have this case when there is no initial velocity. That, that's something which is... Alright, basically that's it for today. Um, thank you very much. I do recommend you to read the notes for this lecture. They are very detailed. Basically everything, whatever I'm saying, is written in the notes. So it would be, it would be like an additional um, repetition of the same uh, material. Okay, that's it. Thanks very much and good luck.